Tall Tale TV. The Dragon of Time, Gods and Dragons, by Aaron Dennis. What do you see? Scar asked. One warrior produced a telescope. Looking through the glass for a moment, he was silent. Then he turned to the mercenary. The three lookouts on the roof have not seen us, and I did not see anyone looking to the south through their windows, the soldier answered. Excellent, Scar sighed. Taking this tower by surprise allows the Kolshedrins to continue running their supply wagons. Their horse-drawn carts stop at each outpost along the Cetronian border carrying goods. Therein lies the second portion of Zoltek's attack strategy. With the supply wagons compromised, storming the adjacent outposts is a much easier task, especially after my suggestion of utilizing the wagons for an ambush. Some of the warriors glanced at each other. Their frowns and furrowed brows were indication of disbelief. Zamajans considered themselves masters of the art of war, but then they had yet to dethrone King Gilgamesh and take Satron for themselves. Scar slowly climbed the sandy hill. At the top, amid stunted shrubberies, he laid on his stomach. A beaten path through the thin chaparral rounded the tower. Two more paths curved to the east and the west. It was evident by the twin tracks that supply wagons came about on a regular basis. Scar maintained his observations. No wagon was in sight, and it was too dusty to see any other tower on the black horizon. The silence was his only concern. They may yet hear our approach, he thought. He climbed back down and addressed his group, saying, Men, we must move slowly, lest our heavy feet draw unwanted attention. They nodded in understanding. Scar rounded the hill and skulked the remaining distance to the outpost. His eyes were wide, ready for any movement. The soldiers behind him grit their teeth while doing their best to remain quiet. Before long, they reached the beaten path. With backs pressed to the brown stone of the tower, they waited for Scar to mount the attack. He approached the massive entryway at the base and peeked inside. The structure of the tower, as was similar with those of Zimajan architecture, was a four-entry crossway at the base, with a staircase leading to the top. The size of the entrances also allowed the supply wagons to pull into the tower proper. From his position, Scar saw two men with bronze skin clad in brown leather armor. The guards sat at a table, chatting. They had no clue bloodthirsty Samajans had arrived with slaughter on the mind. Scar turned back to his men and pointed to round the other side. He counted ten seconds after they moved. Then he rushed inside with a great sword at the ready. The Kalshedrans had not even the time to comprehend the situation. Scar slashed his blade, and one's head fell from his body. The other just came to his feet, but Scar had kept the momentum of his swing going by carrying the sword overhead. With a vertical slash, he killed the second man. In less than five seconds, the base of the outpost was secured. Scar held his left fist up. In silence, the men waited a moment. When no clamor from above resounded, Scar took the lead again. He rushed past the long table lined with lanterns, plates of dried fruit, and Kalshedran corpses to the steps at the far end. Battle-lusty Zimajans followed behind Scar, aware of the plan of attack. Four grumbling soldiers remained at the base in the event of Kalshedran support from whatever sights unseen. Twenty steps up from the base of the outpost was another large room, similar in design only with windows in place of doorways. Coming off the steps, the Zamajans fanned out and slew three Kalshedrans. Drunk from too much wine, the enemy gave no resistance. Once more, Scar waited. There was no sound indicating their presence was known, and he proceeded up more steps, only with four less men to remain on the second floor. Twenty more steps up, he spilled into a third room. It was lined with rows of beds. Caught unawares, a Kalshedran guard gasped and made to grab his spear. A Zamajan warrior chucked his javelin. It struck the guard high in the back, and he crashed to the floor with a great deal of noise. Roused by the attack, the slow waking guards tried to resist, but Scar and the soldiers made easy work of the enemy. Sleeping lions make easy prey, Scar laughed to himself. I'll take the roof the mercenary whispered. He walked slowly. Time was of little importance. The tower had been secured, leaving his only concern the Kalshedrin's gong. Aid was likely too far to pose the Zamajans any immediate threat, but negligence was outside of Scar's approach. 
coming close to the last steps, his bald, white head poked up through the floor. Hey? A dozing Kolshedron asked in shock. One made for the gong while the other swung an axe at Scar. He parried by simply pointing his blade forward. Following up with a lunge at the top step, he stabbed the guard in the midsection, leapt up to the floor, and spun with a slash across the back of the man about to ring the gong. The blow killed the enemy, but Scar left his flank open. The remaining Kolshedron slashed at exposed skin. With a groan, Scar twisted his sword hand. The action brought the pommel against the guard's head. Staggered from the blow, the Kolshedron was susceptible to a kick in the gut. The mercenary's immense foot sent the man into the tower's guardrail and over it. The enemy plummeted close to a hundred feet. The four Zimajans at the base saw the guard hit the ground. A large puff of dust came up, but was quickly carried away by the subtle winds. I guess he's done it, one soldier chuckled. On the roof, beneath a thin, whipping cloth for daytime shade, Scar took the rotating ballista. A bolt was already loaded. By pushing against a horizontal beam built into the framework, he pointed the giant weapon to the south, where the remaining Zimajans, along with General Dumar, waited for the signal that the supply wagon was on its way. Then Scar went down a floor. Someone gather oil and cloths, he ordered. While they did so, he went back to the roof and took a seat in a wicker chair. Frowning, he checked his flank. The blood was already dried, and the wound no longer ached. He scratched it. Crimson dust crumbled away, revealing a new scar. Why does it heal so quickly? Grab a dragon and fly on over to storiesbydennis.com. Aaron Dennis loves writing books about dragons, and currently has two books published in the Dragon of Time series. Book 1, Gods and Dragons, and Book 2, Dragon Slayer. Both are available on his website or at smashwords.com. Links in the description. Hey guys, thanks for listening. So, I've been going for just shy of three months now. I wanted to know what you think of the channel so far. Any suggestions on how to improve it? What do you like? What do you think I could do better? Any and all critiques are welcome. And don't worry, I've got a thick skin. I can take it. Either toss it in the comments below or hit me up at talltaletv.com because I want to make the best channel possible for you guys. Thanks. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.